Hello chess friends and welcome to Yazard of Chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit decline studies. So in this studies we have seen some great openings and great defenses after first moves d4, d5 and c4 and today we continue with our Queen's Gambit decline studies in its so called Samish variation. The Samish variation is a sideline of the exchange variation uh, that's uh, very very important I think to know uh, the exchange variation is a very solid and very compact approach of white. So white is trying to simplify the game and then is trying to launch maybe a uh, um, queen side minority attack or is maybe trying to occupy your weak scores in the position so it's very unpleasant sometimes to play against the exchange variation from black's perspective for sure so that's why i think we should understand what's going on on the board we should study uh, the exchange variation more and more and today as i said we're studying again the same -ish variation that was part of our analysis so far and the same -ish variation is a very annoying and an unpleasant aggressive approach of white when white is continuing with this very annoying bishop to f4 move and in our previous studies we have seen some cool ideas for white how white can maybe uh, win the game with the uh, same -ish variation but i think we can agree that both of these videos we, that we have covered previously were simply part of more black's mistakes than it were part of maybe uh, the powerful play of white so that's why i think we should find the best line we should find the best solution how to play against this bishop to a four approach so that's why first of all i prepared a beautiful gameplay by stockfish 15 how stockfish is destroying the same -ish variation of the queen's game decline and then in the continuation we'll see also some other part particular sidelines that are possible Possible. so as i said but let's see now how stockfish dismantles d4 how stockfish dismantles the so-called samish variation of the queen's game decline so its opponent was rebel opened here with the move d4 we have now the move knight to f6 we have c4 we have now the move e6 preparing maybe uh the nimzo indian but now after move knight to f3 white continues now with the so-called anti-nimzo or counter nimzo indian setup so we're playing now the move d5 we're hitting uh the center immediately we're challenging now the opponent's c4 and now white continues with the move knight to c3 which becomes now of course the three knights variation now knight from b to d7 this is now the so-called barman variation but now after move c takes d5 uh white undermines the pressure trades off simply uh here the pawns in the center of the board and be it becomes now the so-called exchange variation of the queen's game decline now comes e takes d5 and now comes this very unpleasant move bishop to f4 hitting the pawn on the c7 and there are not so many things that you can do here in my opinion you have to play the move c6 this is simply a must move that you have to play in our previous analysis we have seen some ideas of bishop to e7 uh, then uh, in one beautiful game that we have seen yasser serwan uh, destroyed his opponent by simply playing the move knight to b5 so that's why you have to play first the move c6 but now comes the fun part here e3 is a uh, white continuation and now please don't mess this up because we have seen also in my previous video, so please check out this series from the beginning because it's very important to watch this videos uh, combined. Uh, after move e3, uh, you can make again many, many mistakes, I think. Uh, in my honest opinion, the best line that you have to play, you have to use now this moment, you have to play knight to h5. You have to chase the bishop uh, here on f4 you, because the bishop doesn't have any more good squares. The bishop has uh, uh, square g5, has of course the square e5, has of course all also uh, the square g3 so every of this continuation we will analyze but first we'll analyze the continuation after move bishop to g5 because if you don't play knight to h5 if you play a more passive move like bishop to e7 i guarantee you and we have seen in my previous video that with bishop to d3 queen to c2 maybe h3 g4 launching a flank attack here on the king side maybe even with queen side casting i think white could destroy you really in a brutal brutal way so it's simply now time to use this moment and chase the bishop on f4 now let's see possible continuation so white can play now the move bishop to g5 and my recommendation now after move bishop to g5 is now to play the move bishop to e7 it forces now again a reaction by uh, white but now after bishop to e7, queen to e7, notice that the queen comes out with the tempo. The queen is out and now we're controlling in a beautiful way this beautiful square on e4. And it's not so easy now for or even for white to play the game because in many occasions uh, white is trying to cement the knight here around the square e5 but we have now great great control around the square e5 and notice also the queen is controlling the c5 square so it's not so easy for white to dominate on on both of this 
uh, scores because many times these are the clear targets of white. Many times we have seen maybe a minority attack like a3, b4 by white and then white is continuing with ideas of knight to a4, knight to c5. But now the c5 is already taken and also the b4, uh, we have a control of the b4 score so it's not so easy even for white to push the pawn on b4 in order to uh, support the further c5 uh, outpost. So I think with the move queen to e7 we are controlling many squares and now our idea here from white from black's perspective pardon me is to play f5 knight to f6 and then knight to e4 controlling further this very important square and it's i think nothing spectacular nothing special but i think it's a decent way to get out of this tactical mess and stockfish plays also this particular line its opponent rebel continued now with the move bishop to e7 now look at this knight to f6 queen to c7 rebel is trying to control the e4 square but now stockfish simply occupies it and is trying now, trying now ideas of f5 knight to f6 and then also some ideas to maybe somehow play bishop to e6 getting the bishop somehow into the game so in my opinion really really a solid approach so bishop to d3 was played by rebel we have f5 uh, continuing now uh, to support the powerful outpost around the square e4 and now we are trying ideas maybe to play knight to f6 controlling further the e4 uh, knight and then to maybe try ideas of bishop to e6 bishop to f7 and maybe bishop to h5 we can really agree that this bishop on c8 is not optimal. It is blocked out by its own pawn structure. But I think we could find some ideas. Bishop to e6, as I said. Bishop to f7, bishop to h5. Rerouting a little bit the bishop and at least search for new opportunities in the game. So, in the continuation, rebel try castling. We have now also kingside castling. Uh, rook to c1 uh, uh, and now a5. This move is very important very very uh, nice positional move because in many occasions as we said in the beginning of the video a3 b4 knight to a4 knight to c5 is also a solid approach of white so now at least we're slowing now uh slowing down the potential uh here uh, minority attack of white because it's many times a decent and solid uh, strategy here for whites uh, in, in white's game so in the continuation we have now rook from f to d1 uh, king to h8 here played by stockfish really really nice move trying rook to g8 and then to launch a flank attack with g5 g4 this is now a very very nice strategy here by stockfish 15 so knight to e2 a4 we have now knight to uh, f4 cementing this knight on a powerful score but stockfish is not allowing any uh, outpost here is simply hitting the knight the knight has to retreat and now with the move knight to f6 uh stockfish is controlling further the e4 square is trying now to get the knight on g4 maybe hitting also the weak pawn on f2 so in the continuation we have now knight to e5 knight to d7 uh, we have now knight to f3 we have now again knight to f6 and here rebel tried h3 tried uh, somehow to stop this progress of blacks but stockfish simply continues with now first of all with the move a3 we have now the move b3 and now queen to g7 preparing now the very powerful g4 move if g4 happens of course maybe maybe even the g file could be open and notice the queen is also where the king is so if something gets cleared then of course the king is uh, here endangered already so in the continuation knight to e5 again stockfish is battling against this um, knight on e5 and now comes the critical moment i think of the game here rebel tried this stunning tactic knight to c6 but stockfish calculates of course this position in a good way this tactic is of course beautiful but it's not so dangerous if you play now the correct moves i think you can really defend the position because um a better idea is maybe to play the move f3 simply kicking away the knight but still i think um, black has a solid game after knight to d6 we are controlling the f5 score and you have to make now a reaction you have to play think i think uh, knight takes d7 after bishop to d7 still i think with g4 we could really open the position here in a beautiful way on the king side so in my opinion really really a better game here for black so as we said after move knight to d6 here rebel tried a very aggressive knight takes c c6 we have b takes c6 okay we have a double attack against the rook against the pawn stockfish simply lifts the rook here to a7 we have queen to d5 but now after move knight to f6 uh, stockfish keeps somehow the pieces glued together keeps everything compact after move knight to f6 of course notice that the long diagonal for the light school bishop is liberated now the f5 opponent is at least protecting and also the knight on f6 is controlling further uh, the knight on e4 so now the rook will come into the game so really, really here good 
continues to defend the moves here by stock with 15. So here Rebel continues with Queen to C4. We have now the move G4, and now Rebel tries another brutal tactical move, but uh, it was simply too rush, I think, here after rook to c1, rook takes c1, knight to g1, we're covering everything, bishop to c4 here by rebel, it's really, really hard even for black to defend this position, but of course, Stockfish, when Stockfish has the opportunity, will simply find the best moves, knight to f6 is now a beautiful retreatment, and we have still a good control of the knight on g8, so in the continuation, uh, h takes g4, queen to d7, hitting the rook, we have rook to f8, so of course rebel is staying on the eighth rank that's now the only opportunity to make something out of this position queen to d6 again hitting the rook rook to uh, c8 f takes g4 and now with the move knight to f4 a rebel is trying to deflect maybe with the move knight to h5 and deflect the knight from f6 and then maybe uh, to even deliver checkmate on g8 it's of course an idea but again as i said if you play the game correctly nothing spectacular because stock which simply continues with this plan here flank attack on the king side is trying to split the pawn chain and is trying to create further weaknesses in front of white's king so we have now f3 rook to e7 now comes this deflection idea but now with rook to c7 we have rook takes c7 because if you play something like rook to a8 uh, to get out of this mess then we'll play this very important idea a rook to c4 we're hitting the bishop that was very annoying very unpleasant uh, now after b takes c4 we'll simply take out the knight and uh, the bishop is of course not there anymore so it's now completely completely winning here for for black so that's why after we move rook to c7 we have rook takes c7 uh, rook takes c7 knight to f6 knight to f6 we have now king to f1 but now knight to d5 a beautiful move here by stock for 15 because you cannot take of course queen to c2 is going to happen hitting the rook but also then uh, trying to deliver checkmate here on f2 so that's why uh, after knight to d5 we have uh, rook to d3 knight to b4 we have rook to d1 stock which now includes more pieces into the game is trying also to deliver here a very annoying check king to e1 queen to h1 here um, a rebel covers but now stockfish includes more pieces into the game again a stunning tactic knight takes a2 rook takes a2 queen to e3 uh, you have to now cover with the bishop another check stockfish simply grabs another pawn simply push the pawn further here we have a new promotion a couple of checks and it was here after queen to b2 a beautiful check made here by stockfish 15 so as i said this is must know theory let's go back after move bishop to f4 c6 and now knight to h5 you have to play this move you have to chase the bishop you should not tolerate this bishop now after move bishop to e7 okay you are maybe having some worries why should i play the move bishop to e7 i'm giving up a powerful bishop of my own because this bishop has a good control i'm continuing the game with my bad bishop on c8 but in my opinion after move bishop to e7 bishop to e7 queen to e7 the queen comes out with the tempo that's now the beautiful part and we have a further control of the e4 square but not only of the e4 we have defensive uh, approach here against the potential outpost on e5 but we are also controlling the very powerful square on c5 so let's see now different opportunities uh, for white how maybe white continue the game uh, here again let's go into this same -ish variation of the queen's gambit uh, decline exchange variation now after move knight to h5 what white can maybe play is this move bishop to e5 and um, i've seen it before in my opinion this is not the best way uh, for white white has to play i think bishop to g5 go into this line uh, but okay here bishop to e5 now we should simply take and now I've seen many times this idea. D takes E5. But notice now, it's very, very tricky how to play now the game from Black's perspective. And I think we have to understand, first of all, what are our advantages here from Black's perspective. Our advantage here is that we have the bishop pair. And many times we forget about our ideas when we're playing with the bishop pair. The first thing that you should always try to do is try to let the position explode make an open position try to open somehow the position in a beautiful way so that's why i think we have to search for opportunities how to make here really an open position so here uh it was a beautiful game played by dmitry andrekin with the black pieces against alisher Sul uh, Suleimanov. first of all there is a one 
one tactical problem of blacks afro potential maybe knight to d4 notice that maybe the knight should be hanging so the knight is a little bit loose so that's why our first move should be the move g6 keeping our knight here very very active uh, here the continuation bishop to e2 was played by black but now a very important move that i think you have to play is the move f6 and many times uh black is not playing this move this was the only game that i found in the database but this is also the suggested move by the top engine stockfish uh, here you have to play f6 you have to get rid of this very annoying pawn and uh, keep really an open game with the bishop pair i think you could have fun with because the move f6 it's liberating now the long diagonal here for the dash with bishop so here after move f6 uh, white tried uh, kingside casting we have now bishop to g7 but now after move knight to d2 now comes again sort of must know theory uh, that i think you have to apply here now a beautiful move is simply kingside casting and many of us would not dare to play the game like this but i guarantee you a really good game if you play this particular line and it was also here introduced by the top crime master dimitri adrek and he played here with an awesome outstanding game uh let's see now possible continuations what uh what uh, white can play white can play of course the move bishop to h5 but now after g takes h5 uh e takes f6 of course we have rook to f6 and okay white can maybe take out the pawn on h5 but this is in my opinion not good because we have here really from this point on i think a brutal really a monstrous attack because the queen is, is exposed now we're just chasing the queen we're playing bishop to e5 look at this we're having a beautiful harmony bishop to h3 now we play queen to d7 rook to f8 and from this point on i think the game is simply a one-way ticket so so i guarantee you that that you have again a beautiful attacking approach the f2 is weak uh, the likes worse are weak so i'm not saying this is winning again immediately but i think you have fun uh, playing one pawn down but with really with a beautiful attacking formation so let's go back after move kingside casting and this move uh, King, uh, King's like now um, Andrejki's opponent he tried the move g4 and you see the knight gets trapped actually but this is the way to go because here after move uh, f takes e5 okay you have this one g, uh, uh, g takes h4 but now with the move bishop to h3 the rook has to move because uh, here first of all oh, pardon me the rook cannot move because you get this move queen to g5 and you can even deliver checkmate so in the game king to h1 was played we have now e4 bishop to uh, g4 we have bishop to f1 queen to f1 and okay we have now uh here a couple of pawns and the rook gained for two minor pieces but here uh, we can agree i think this is a powerful bishop uh we have here opportunities to get the queen into the game and here and played the very powerful queen to h4 f3 now uh, e takes f3 bishop to f3 and now after move rook to e8 uh, the game was i think very very solid for black uh here white tried to improve this Install uh, this isolated pawn on e3. Here we have bishop to uh, h6. The bishop is coming into the game, targeting, of course, the h2 pawn. In the continuation, we have rook to d1, protecting also this knight on d2. In the continuation, we have bishop to d2, rook to d2, and now after move rook to f3 in this position. Um, white resign because after queen to f3, we have this one and we'll simply hit the rook on d2. So, as I said, this is the way to go after a potential bishop to e5. This is again must know theory i think knight to e5 after d takes e5 okay your knight is a little bit loose on h5 but now with g6 we're fixing the knight and now f6 f6 is very important and now to launch this very aggressive approach even you can sacrifice the piece because as we said f takes e5 and now with bishop to h3 uh, queen to g5 we're even threatening here a checkmate on g2 so this is again i think must know theory here from black's perspective so let's see now another approach of whites we're having again the same position now we'll see a beautiful game by grandmaster by uh, alexander baburin again this uh, same ish variation with bishop to f4 now again knight to h5 bishop to e5 knight to e5 again knight to e5 now instead of d takes e5 and again notice the knight is loose but now again we're playing the move g6 uh, we have here bishop to d3 f4 is of course not an opportunity i think 
white would love to play f4 because white would continue simply with his powerful outpost don't allow your opponent to build this structure immediately because now it's of course not possible we play queen to h4 g3 knight takes g3 so it's simply not working so that's why bishop to d3 but now with bishop to d6 we are again uh, hitting the knight we have knight to f3 and now i think mission accomplished look at this bishop to g4 we're not allowing again white this outpost if he cements this position on dark sports then i think he could uh he could have a solid game with the move bishop to d6 we are controlling again this very important two squares the weak square on c5 but also the weak square on e5 and here alexander baborin continues simply with queen to e7 again not allowing b4 b4 we have talked about many times in the minority attack uh, uh, studies we have seen that b4 was always an opportunity to launch a flank attack here and then as i said maybe again to cement the position with the move knight to a4 and then knight to c5 so we have rook to e1 now f5 and look at this again battling for the a weak e4 square the knight is under fire we have a good control here with the dark square bishop so it's simply a one-way ticket now in the continuation bishop to e2 knight to e4 queen to c2 rook to uh, e8 b4 trying some kind of an attack but now with the move a6 keeping everything solid here in the continuation now finally this idea knight to a4 uh targeting the c5 weakness but now f4 really beautiful move here by baborin as we said we have the bishop pair on the board now we're letting the position explode it's really time now to open the position here on the king side so we have now e takes f4 we have rook to f4 uh in the continuation we have now knight to c5 but now a beautiful stunning tactic here by baborin knight takes f2 because after king to f2 if you take then you get this stunning move queen to h4 now look at this rook to f3 uh, targeting the h2 so you can even get checkmated here by the peace activity so after move uh, uh, knight to f2 we have here bishop to a6 uh, by Bernd schneider this was uh, baborin's uh, opponent we have here knight to e4 again cementing the position around the square e4 knight takes e4 rook to e4 rook to e4 d takes e4 now we're letting this uh, position explode the knight has to move first uh, white deliver the check but now after move knight to e5 bishop to e5 d takes e5 queen to e5 uh, here alexander baborin uh, reached a, a good endgame with an extra pawn and eventually won this beautiful beautiful endgame so as i said let's go back you could maybe get changed uh, challenged with this idea um let's go back bishop to e5 knight to e5 now knight to e5 instead of d takes e5 is also an opportunity but as i said don't worry uh g6 never never allow your opponent to play the move f4 never allow him to cement a position on dark squares because if that happens then i think white could have a solid game with the move bishop to d3 maybe with some ideas to play g4 g5 and similar stuff so be careful also here for uh for white um white's opportunity so let's see now another example here it's a game played by yuri kuzubov with the black pieces what also white could do uh, i think it's also worth the study here again we have the same ish variation e3 knight to h5 as recommended and now your opponent could try here to move bishop to g3 but again in my opinion nothing spectacular we'll just trade it off uh, with taking out the bishop we're playing bishop to d6 not allowing outpost uh, we have here bishop to d3 look at this your pawn is hanging but now with queen to e7 this is i think a good move because uh, if you of course take here rook takes a7 rook takes a h7 uh, bishop to h7 then with g6 of course we can lock the bishop and eventually we will take it out so this is not working so that's why here from move queen to e7 uh, here uh, Kuzubov's opponent tried queen to c2 but now uh after queen to c2 knight to f6 the knight is coming into the defense bishop to f5 bishop to f5 queen to f5 g6 hitting the queen and now with the move h5 we're controlling of course the g4 square in the continuation king side casting and now here black played i think a solid line king to f8 king to g7 and secured simply the king here we have now of course also here opportunities to get the g4 square again we are controlling the e4 square so we can play rook to e8 and similar stuff controlling for this very important square so i think there are many sidelines we can of course we cannot of course cover every particular sideline that's possible i think the strategies remain the same we're hitting the e4 square and we're battling for the e5 we're battling for the c5 we have seen we have now powerful bishop so many many opportunities but notice in the beginning in my opinion you have to play the move knight to h5 and i guarantee you you have a solid game so i think 
we have solved at least a little bit here uh, um, uh, some problems of the same variation from black's perspective please try it out in my honest opinion it's very important to be flexible because maybe you're playing the queen's game decline but you can maybe sometimes change also a little bit your move order you don't have to play the same move order all, all over and over again your opponent can of course play for instance this same -ish variation but i think we have also some great opportunities uh here for black so okay i hope that you enjoy the studies uh, i hope this settles for you and i think this is very important because if you play something else your opponent could have really an aggressive approach so please study it more try it out with some opportunities for white and for black so um if you have other questions about this opening and about other uh, queen's game declined openings and some other defenses please check check out our whole series here's the whole playlist about 18 something videos about the queen's game declines it's a tough study please please uh, be thorough in your analysis because many of th these things will happen to you again as i said here's the um, a link to the playlist so check it out and have fun and if you have um, maybe problems to play uh, against e4 you can also check out our hyper accelerated dragon sicilian defense series which i also use in my in my openings as a repertoire i think it's a solid approach against e4 here's also the link and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course